What's going on, everyone? Lauren Sister here with ESPN, hanging out with our friend Cole Kubik on WJOX. You can catch him in the morning, 7 to 10, with Greg McElroy. You can also catch him on the sidelines of the SEC Network on primetime mostly or whatever game of the week is. So uh, we appreciate you, and we're going to dive right into yet another episode of Head to Head. Oh, let's go now. Auburn, what a win for them, defeating Texas A&M 13-10. Cadillac Williams' first win as the interim head coach. Two teams on a five-game losing streak. And so a lot of people say, what does this game even mean? Well, this game means a lot. And Cole, you were on the sidelines for this game, and you were there to feel the emotion, to see everything that went down uh, at Jordan-Hare Stadium. And by all accounts, everything that I heard, I had a dear friend of mine that was at the game uh, who said that it was something so special, one of the more special games that he's ever been to and seen, and um, just just the reaction from the fans. What was your biggest takeaway from from that win on Saturday night? I would say just the environment, and and it had a lot to do with Carnell Williams, his attitude, his demeanor, and then seeing uh, Danny Lindsay, Jason Campbell, Brandon Johnson, Marcus McNeil, guys that played with him that wanted to be there to share that with him. And then the student section was just loud. They filled up early. As soon as that thing opened up, I mean, five minutes later, the student section was full. The stadium was loud the entire time. It had energy. The environment was great. I think it played a part in Auburn winning that football game. But I think it was about Carnell. I think it was about a new start. I think it was about a new energy. And you felt it on campus Friday afternoon, moving around. I had my family in town. And it was busy everywhere. It was crowded everywhere that you went. You can always get a good feel in most of these SEC towns what the crowd's going to be like for the game. Friday afternoon, Friday evening, especially early in the day, Friday, and it was it was packed. It was jammed, and you knew it was going to be good. So, uh, and I actually wanted to walk to the game and just check out some of the tailgating. I had not been able to go to an Auburn game since the opener in 2020, and it, it, you knew right away walking through campus that the fans were ready. They were going to show up. They were going to show out. They did, and just that environment was what stuck out to me more than anything else, Lauren. It, it was really cool to see, and then obviously – being able to talk to Carnell before the game at halftime because Auburn was up and then post game was really special. Just seeing the emotion that he had, seeing the people around him, what it meant to him, seeing his family come up behind him after the game. It was, uh, it was really cool. And then being able to talk to him and get just his understanding of, of what he's trying to accomplish and how much he does not believe it is about him and how much he wants it to be for the players. It's uh, it's really cool to see. And it was a special weekend, special night there in Auburn, Alabama. And Cole, I know for you as a former Auburn player and someone that, you know, you always do a great job of just covering the SEC as a whole, but you've been embedded in that program and just to see where it's gone, see where it's been and to be part of that. Just watching your interviews with Cadillac was was special to see that heart, just to see that spark in his eyes and just that excitement. And I love what you said about the service piece, about the part where he just wants to be there. He wants to be there leading this football team. And I mentioned that friend of mine, his name's Randy McClendon. And, uh, you know, one key key piece to all this. And there's a great column that Joe Goodman did on AL.com that outlines this story. Uh, Randy McClendon um, has an incredible story. He and his wife, Beverly, I call them my Birmingham parents. And I bring this up because in this story, it's about the loss that they had and their daughter, Kimberly, back in 2004. And she had given her dad a football that was signed by Cadillac. And there was just such a love for the Auburn Tigers and for Cadillac and that season and everything that was happening. And so he kind of shares his story and what this means to him and what Cadillac means to this football team and this program. And it's just something when you read this, this column that Joe wrote, you just can feel it. it's so much more than just a football game to so many people and to this Auburn family and you were there, you could feel it. What do you think all this energy and emotion, whether it's a win or a loss does for this Auburn program and the confidence it has going forward and, and recruiting and just for these young men that have gone out and fought every single day and battled it out and put everything on the line. You know, there's so much special about Saturday night in so many different directions in so many different ways. Um, I think what it does is just uh, I think the Auburn family, as you mentioned, and, and that, that word family sometimes gets poked and prodded and made fun of. But you, I think that's a big reason that you're able to write articles like you mentioned and you're able to talk about things the way that we are and you're able to see things show up and be what they are. Uh, the amount of people that are not directly affiliated with Auburn that came up to me either walking to the game or around town Friday or at the game Saturday 
and reference the crowd that, man, these are two teams that have lost five straight. Like these are two teams that aren't battling for a division title or a spot in the playoff. It's amazing that this is what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like. I think what it does is it shows you what the Auburn energy can derive, what it can bring up, what it can, what it can make, and what, what kind of environment it can create, what kind of, what kind of people it can create and make, and the kind of people that it can help and the different things that it can do. So I feel like that when, when Carnell ran out as the head coach against Mississippi State, a lot of Auburn fans felt like that a, a corner had been turned and that there were only going to be positive things in the future, regardless of where that went or how that went. And I think that was a big part of what you saw Saturday night as well. They just, they just got it at home instead of on the road Saturday night. So I don't want to say a new beginning because I think there still could be different beginnings uh, announced in the near future. But I think a lot of people are very comfortable with Carnell leading things right now. And a lot of people will be very comfortable with him leading things down the road. There are multiple people that have said to me that they would love to see him get that opportunity. They have the confidence that he would be able to get that opportunity. Um, I don't think it's something that you can rule out just because of how special he has carried him in such a special manner. He's carried himself here over the last couple of weeks. All right. And so Auburn got a big matchup again back at uh, Jordan Harris stadium. I say big matchup because let's, let's be real. You can't look past Western Kentucky and this is a great game for them to get prepared for that iron bowl. So we're not going to look too far ahead in the future, but just some things that really stood out. And it, it, to me, obviously, you know, the run game, we saw some improvement there. Tank Bigsby, Jarquez Hunter went to town, were able to pick up some big yards in their rushing efforts. And the defense to me really stepped up and took a big yeah. step in the right direction, limiting the Aggies to 215 yards. Um, they just, t- to me, just a lot more disciplined football, a lot better tackling. And I think that's something we've really seen in these last two weeks. And so it was really cool to see that. Obviously, the defense allowing just three points there early in the game and then that lone touchdown towards the end of the game. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of guys stood out in that in that defensive performance. And, and I think that this is just, you know, an opportunity for them against this Western Kentucky football team to continue working on those things, maybe continue putting more points on the board, driving into the end zone, finding some ways to score points to get this offense going, because we know they're going to need it against a much tougher Alabama opponent. What are you looking for in this matchup? And uh, what's your prediction? Yeah, I think you still want to build offensively. And, and Carnell told us last week, he said, listen, we're going to strip this thing down again. We want to find four five, six, seven things we're really good at. And that's what we're going to run. Now, we'll change the presentation of it a little bit, which was something that I really thought uh, was fantastic and Auburn made big strides in. I thought Ike Hilliard and Will Friend did a really nice job of developing a plan that it didn't have 10 or 15 new plays, but it had 10 or 15 new presentations of the same plays, and it made it more difficult to defend. You saw more misdirection. Uh, I think that's something that's going to continue to give Auburn an advantage. You saw more backs on the field at the same time. Uh, multiple tight end sets continued. But you're going to have to find some balance at some point, Lauren, and get a little bit more of a passing game generated. The win did work against the quarterback Saturday night. I thought it affected both Robbie Astrid and Connor Wigman because uh, later in the game it really picked up and the temperature dropped pretty severely. And I think the wind was howling, and that was something that made a difference throwing the football. Uh, but you just got to find a way to keep defenses honest. They did that with some quarterback runs, more designed quarterback runs this past week. But Robbie's – I don't, I mean, Robbie's beat up. This is the end of the season. Most guys are. And so you've got to be careful with how many hits he took. I think that's why you saw Wildcat a little bit. And Auburn will probably run that some more this week. But just adding some things through the air that can force defenses to defend you a different way. Uh, if that can continue to be built, then this offense can continue to grow and maybe find ways to be better. Defensively, you know, you worry about the health a little bit. Jeffrey Imba left that game. You don't want him to be a guy that's dinged up because he's a big physical body inside that that defense needs. I thought Jeff Smetting did a nice job of allowing the linebackers to attack against Texas A&M instead of sit back and read. Just kind of saying, forget it. Let's just go find the ball and get it and attack a gap and see what we can make happen and try to be disruptive. This is a different challenge this weekend. Uh, I don't think this is an opponent that you can just come out and try to work things against or try to get better with different plays. You're going to have to play really good football to beat this team. Austin Reed can throw it all over the place. They have a mm-hmm. high-powered offense. Uh, physically, they're a team. If you go watch the UAB game earlier in the season, a very physical team themselves, they went toe-to-toe with that team and even pushed them around a little bit late in the game. So both lines of scrimmage are going to have their hands full. This is a game that Auburn has to play well in. But I think defensively with Colby Wooden, Derek Hall, the pass rush that you have seen the last two games, I think that continues. I think that's problematic for Western Kentucky. I think Auburn can control the clock and control the pace of the game. 
And I'm going to say 24-21, Auburn finds a way to get a win against Western Kentucky this weekend. I like it. 24-21. I got Auburn winning 27-17. We'll see how things shake out. It's a midday kickoff, 3 o'clock. Looking forward to it. And, uh, Cole, where are you going to be at this week? I'll be in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Saturday night. Ole Miss travels to take on Arkansas. Uh, it's supposed to be the low of 19 Saturday night. So, Ooh. Yeah. Hey, you got to get you one of those electric vests, those heated vests with the battery pack. I just ordered one. I'm so pumped to use it. Cannot wait because this is that time of year when it's cold. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers. (laughs) 